Hi, I'm Dave Wood and I created the Type Focus Careers Program. Welcome to this orientation video that highlights the main features of the Administrator's Interface. This is a user's homepage and anyone with administrative rights will find an admin link here. If you're the Master Administrator, you will arrive at this page. Only Master Administrators have access to the customization options. Administrators have full access to the Sort, Select and Communicate and Descriptive Statistics features and sub-administrators have partial access to these two features. When the Master Administrator clicks into the Customization Options, he will arrive at this page. The Program Management allows you to customize the program to your needs and is straightforward. I will comment on two features, displaying or not displaying the Resume Wizard. The Resume Wizard feature is a template-driven form that has both good and bad points. A good point is that it is template-driven and therefore we will create a reasonably good resume each time. The bad point is that it is a template-driven and will never create an excellent resume. Many of our clients choose to not display it in the Student's Job tab because they have their own ways of teaching about resumes and don't want to have a conflicting approach that may confuse their students. If you choose to not display it, it simply does not show up on the Jobs tab. The other point I want to highlight is the tiers of education that you may want the program to display. The program defaults to all five levels. So for most universities, they will restrict the display to just the top two tiers. For two-year colleges, you might want to display only the top four. Tier 2 will include trades such as welding, Tier 3 which has your shorter programs, and Tiers 4 and 5 if you have university transfer programs such as associate degrees in arts or science. Let's turn our attention to the announcements. I will add an announcement as an example. So to start, I click here and I type in a message please visit this website. I also click on the no expiry date because I want it to be a permanent display and be sure to save it. Let's take a look at what it looks like on the user side. As you can see, this message is posted but it is too small. So we go back to the announcements and I will edit it. So I'm going to change the size to a larger size. I'm going to add a color just for fun. And I'm going to hot link the website to a website of my choice. In this case, I'm hotlinking it to eBay just for fun. But there's an important tip here. I'd suggest that you click into Target, click into Pop-up Windows, and set the width at 600 and the height at 600. And I'll show you why that's important in a minute. You go back here, make sure you save it and let's take a look at what it looks like now. Now we can see it says please visit this website in a larger fashion. It rotates every two seconds and when it comes back I'm going to click on the hot link. So I click on the hot link and it brings up a partial window, a 6 by 600 pixel window. The reason this is an important thing to add is if you don't take that extra step it opens up a whole window and the student tends to forget where they are. This way they can click out of it and they're still back at their home page. If we go back to the admin interface and I want to change the order, it's just as simple as clicking, dragging, dropping it down and save the order. And now the first announcement will be enjoy your time with us. The manage the office information is just about exactly the same except it doesn't have an expiry date so we don't need to review it here. The add a variable to filter users has a great orientation video. So there's no need to redo it here. So to save time, I'll just refer to it. For the administrators and sub-administrators, there's a great orientation video here as well. So I won't go into this in too much detail. 
So just keep one thing in mind. Both administrators and sub-administrators need to be registered into the program so you can find them to start with. Once you've found them, you simply check their name and click on Add. That's all there is to it. And the next time that person logs in, she or he will have an admin link on their home page and they will have access to all the data for the sort, select, and communicate and descriptive statistics features. The sub-administrator is created almost as easily, except now we tie that person to a variable. Review the video link on this page to get a better understanding of the reasons for creating one. The subscription information is straightforward. It just summarizes your current subscription. Perhaps the most useful bit of information includes the contract length and dates of renewal. The Add a Major is an important feature and to introduce it let me show you a, a client that is using it currently. This is the display of occupations matched to the assessment results without the Add a Major feature. Now let's turn the feature on. Now you can see two things that are different. The first being only those occupations that the college has a program for are listed, so it's a much shorter list. And secondly, direct links to the college's website are displayed for matching programs. So for example, if I'm looking at food services managers, I can click on this link. It takes me to the college's website that describes the program that's appropriate for it, including the course requirements, times, dates, and prerequisites. This makes the student's life a lot easier. He's not having to sort through occupations that have no related programs, and those that do have programs are hotlinked to the college's website for further information about dates and prerequisites. How do we do this? You start with the Add a Major link and toggle it to Yes. Now select the educational tiers you want to display. This would be the same tiers you chose in the program's management to display, so let's take Job Zones 4 and 5. At this point, the most effective way to proceed is to have previously matched your programs with the occupations listed here. This can look like a daunting task, but we've made it easier by creating an Add a Major template instructions to help. Download this template and be prepared to spend upwards of 15 hours to complete the whole process. The payoff is that once you've made all the links, you will save hundreds of hours of counseling in the future because your students will find the information they need on their own. And, of course, it's easier for your students, so it is a win-win all around. The process is now simple. Let's take acupuncturists as an example. If you have a program for acupuncturists, you type it in here. Highlight it, add the link, and now you want to remove the NA because you do have a program for it and you want to display this occupation so you save it. In your admin interface this is how it will look. Whenever the Occupation Acupuncturist is listed anywhere in the program. It will have a major link listed to it that you have created. But supposing you don't have a program for it, let's look at what you would do then. If you leave it just the way you found it, this is the way it will show up. Any of the assessments that point to acupuncturists will list acupuncturists as an occupation and all the information will be supplied for it, but it will have an NA, meaning that the student knows that the assessment results point to acupuncturists, but that program is not available at your school. The more common way of approaching this is to go back in here and simply remove the display this occupation. And this is what it would look like on your admin interface. There is no indication here that acupuncturists will ever show up again. So what essentially we've done is hiding it. So if you choose to hide programs that you do not offer, they don't show up, which potentially makes it an easier job for your students, just like we saw before. The last two features that we can look at here are Career Services. Career Services 
found in the Jobs tab, subsection Find Jobs, Career Services. This is where you can offer your best advice on finding work, whether it is a link to your college or university job board, or papers on interviewing best practices, or a schedule of courses you offer, like creating good resumes. The way to set this up is straightforward. You simply add any of the links that you want here, connect them to the link on the editing feature, and proceed from there. To show where this fits, we'll go back to the user, goes into the Jobs tab, the Find Jobs, and then the third section, Career Services. And you can see this is where all of the information that you've just posted on your admin interface will show up for the student. And while I'm here at the student side, I will look, show you where the Resources tabs go. This is the customization resources that I will show you from the admin interface in just a minute, but you can add all of your information here too. So I go to the Assess, we come back to the admin interface, customization options, customization resources. It's always editable or deleting here. So you have total control in what you're adding. This forms the end of the customization features that the master administrator has access to. Now let's review the Sort, Select, and Communicate feature by clicking here. So let's say you want to sort by the date range of when your students first registered into the program and select a date range that captured the first year students from a few years back. In this case, I've selected the summer of 2012. This cohort may now be graduating from your institution and you could send them an invitation by email to a career fair or workshop on interviewing skills or time management either by selecting individuals when I sort for this date range for this cohort. In this particular client, I wind up with over 2,000 students. I can send them emails by checking on their name like this or by selecting them all. And now I've selected them all, I can go up here and email them a, a broadcast email. So I can easily contact the 2,000 students in a few minutes informing them of any information that I think would be useful for them. We can also sort individuals if they have done the, the success factors questionnaire. For example, I could sort for people with they're satisfied with major, very low to let's say low. And I find that there are 94 people in this category. So the 94 out of the 2000 have self-identified themselves. They have selected a major, but they're either very dissatisfied or dissatisfied with it. This is known in the industry as data mining. For example, do your students with low social support drop out more frequently than those with high social support? If you have success factors questionnaires added to the program, you can sort for this group and compare their retention rates to another group with higher social support. If you find a relationship, you can now plan some sort of intervention and you have established a baseline to measure the impact your intervention may have. It is an exciting opportunity to really dig into your existing databases to identify opportunities to improve retention rates and create the hard data to prove that you're doing so. I have extensive experience in this type of research and will gladly spend time helping you to set up a research program that will meet your needs. The last section of the admin interface is on descriptive statistics. When we look at your student users, Everyone who registers into the program will be captured here. For the past two years, we check on this when they registered into the program, we had just over 2,500 students. If the optional success questionnaire was chosen, the rest of these descriptive statistics listed here will be relevant. For example, let's see what the results are over the past two years for the number of students who have determined what their major will be and secondly, how satisfied they are with their choice. From the 2,500 students registering in the state range, 429 reported on their satisfaction with their chosen major. As you can see, there are a group of students who are definitely not happy with their choices. The question is, 
how would this affect their motivation to work hard to complete their courses? Research indicates that this is one of the most important reasons for dropping out, so we know it affects these students negatively. Can you do anything about it? Well, that all depends on how you're set up with your programs, but at least now you have a quick way to determine those at-risk students very early in the school term, possibly even before they have started classes. We can review other programs as well. For example, in the success factors, we can look at a success factor called external commitments, which is the amount of time they spend outside classroom on other activities. We can see overall it's fairly high. When we click into external commitments to drill down deeper, we can see there are a number of students here who are explaining that they're working anywhere from 30 hours and more to 20 to 30, to even more, 40 hours a week, uh, either in family responsibilities, employment, or other non-academic activities. We know from our research that people, when they start to spend more than 10 to 15 hours a week, it drastically influences their retention capabilities. Self-awareness areas is another area. We can look at personality, for example, in our date range. It brings up a type table, which uh, gives some information on the, on the category of students. And finally, one of the features that is unique to Type Focus is we can look at program evaluation. And again, in this two-year date range, the program evaluation is where the students themselves actually identify how they feel about the program. So in this case here, we can see some of the summary statistics. Are the average out of a five-point scale is 4.5 for the self-assessments. Very few here, it's just one on Explore Occupations. There's um, a number of people exploring occupations here. And each of these has the comments section. And I will just highlight some of this that you can see the actual comments verbatim that the students put in. It's very encouraging at this time to re review these comments and see just what they are thinking of the program as they go through it. Now we're back at the admin interface homepage. When you want to go back to your home page, you click here. Thank you for your attention and don't forget, all of us at TypeFocus are ready and more than willing to help you understand the many features of this program or to assist you to discover more about your students' databases through data mining. Take care and have a wonderful day.